the dawning of the day moves us from darkness to light, so will the entrance of God's Word lighten up your life. Stay tuned for the teaching ministry of Charlotte Falver as she presents this light with Bringing to Light Ministries. Today is uh, your day for victory in uh, Jesus. I'm so glad that you're with us today. I am Charlotte Favre, and as always, we are coming to the Word of God together. And I hope that you'll have your Bibles there close at hand as we're going to look at some scripture today. And I believe it'll be a real blessing to you as we're going to be talking once again about healing for the brokenhearted. A lot of people have had a lot of situations in life that sometimes bring hurt and pains to our hearts and we don't know how to process those things. But I'm trusting as we share with you God's Word, you're going to know some truth and learn how to walk in these truths and walk in the freedom and the victory that the Lord has provided for you. That's the reason we can open our program. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Shanta has some words she's going to be sharing with you today. Open up your heart and listen carefully to the truths of God's Word. Hello, I'm Shantae Hockman, Charlotte Faber's daughter. The Bible tells us that it is appointed for man once to die. You and I will die one day. For those who have received Jesus as their Lord will spend eternity with Him, but those who have not received Him will perish in their sins. If you died right now, would you spend eternity in heaven? Or would you be brought to hell in a place of eternal torment? You may think you'll go to heaven for being a good person, but that is not the truth. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace ye are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Your good works, nor mine, will get us to heaven, but it's by receiving Jesus as your Lord. You can know that you are going to heaven by a simple prayer. Will you pray with me? Father, I believe that you have sent your only son, Jesus, to die for my sins. I ask you, Lord, to forgive me and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I ask you, Jesus, to be my Lord and my Savior, and I surrender my life to you today. Well, praise the Lord. You can go ahead and turn, if you will, in your Bibles to Romans in chapter 4. We're going to be looking at some passages here in a few moments. But before we get into that, as we have seen, it is God's will for us to walk in His blessings. We saw in our last teaching in Psalms 133 about the importance of there being unity. Unity where God's blessing can come into that arena. But so many times there's families that do not have unity. There is arguing, there is disagreements, and it seems like that life is so difficult. And I know oftentimes as I talk with people, if it's not between a husband and a wife, sometimes it's when kids are going through certain phases of life, and especially when those hormones kick in. And there's these kids that are trying to grow up and they're not sure that they know how. Sometimes for us parents, it is very difficult. But I want you to know that God that gave us those children will give us the wisdom that we need. I think a lot of the problems that I'm seeing today though, is a lot of parents are not knowing how to deal with their kids because their parents didn't know how to deal with them. They had never learned the processes of what is right in Scripture. They had never learned what discipline was about. They were never given boundaries. You see, you have this group of people. They can become very abusive. They're spanking their children. They're cruel to them. They're talking down to them and breaking their little spirits. Then you have this one over here is letting these kids do anything they want. There is no boundaries. And the children are is free to do whatever. You've got two extremes going on here and that child has no balance. And that's where I'm grieved in my heart when I see kids that are really desiring mommy and daddy's attention. But because mommy and daddy are too busy, this child is really doing a lot of things trying to get some attention. So we have issues a lot of times with children when we really need to get some assistance where we can talk through situations. I'm so glad that counseling 
counseling is not just about what mom and dad is demanding. Sometimes a child needs to be heard. We need to know where this child is coming from. They may want something so simple, but they're not knowing how to get through to us because we're too busy. I know something I had to do raising my four was to make a vow with my own eyes. I could be so many busy with doing so many things and especially raising my four that they would come in and they would want to share their stories. And if you've got children, you know, sometimes their stories can take forever and they can go on and on and on about their stories. But you know, I tried to be very careful that I wasn't so busy with washing my dishes or folding clothes or making our clothing or whatever I did in those days that I did not give them my eyes. I don't know if you've ever tried to talk to somebody when their eyes are somewhere else. You didn't really know if they were listening to not. You might get a grunt every now and then. But you know, when you give your children your eyes, they see that you are listening. And it's very important to take those opportunities to help guide our children in their lives. Many times they are speaking out of what may appear as just surface events. But if you are sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit, you may hear something coming from a child that it is declaring a major issue that is going on and they're not knowing how to discuss it with you. It is vital that we as parents ask for God's guidance in raising our children. It is a different day than even when I was being raised. I'm amazed at the things that I'm seeing our young people go through. But I want you to know that God loves the children. He loves them so very much. And as parents, we need to make sure that we affirm our children in the things that are right. You know, they can be into this and into that and we're fussing at them all the time. But you know what, how about the good things? Are we sharing with them the good things? You did a great job. I'm so proud of you in this. Let's ask God for wisdom. Scripture's so clear. Lean not into your own understanding, but all your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your paths. We need the path of being the parents God has called us to be. And then how about unity and with our mates? You know, this is something that I see so many troubles again in the home, so many problems and, and conflict. And, and it's a grievous thing to think that when the house is the place that you should be able to go to, a place where there's refuge and peace. But so many times I'm seeing couples that are wanting to run here and run there because home is not a haven of peace and rest anymore. That's not what God intended for us. And as Christians, I'm trusting that we will begin to look to Scripture and be able to say, God, guide me to be that wife I'm supposed to be or guide me to be that husband that I'm supposed to be. And I believe that's going to be very important in our lives. You know, um, sometimes with our mates and with children, it's like we're always bumping against problems. I call it like two porcupines living in the same home. You know what a porcupine is. It's that little creature that has those quills on the outside of its body. And if an animal gets too close, which that, that porcupine may be fearful of, those little quills will get in the skin of that other animal. And that other animal that causes pain and it's going to run away. And I'm concerned that sometimes in our own families, we're like porcupines. We're hitting up against each other. We are saying things and we're doing things that's agitating each other. And so life becomes miserable for everybody. What's causing these quills in our lives? Why is it that we're bumping against each other? As I've shared so many times through our broadcast, we call a lot of times these things arrows that's been shot into us. We have issues out of our past. I know I had to deal with some in my life, and I know as I counsel, I'm always finding myself saying, this is what I had to do. This is what I dealt with. But oftentimes when we are married, we begin to have these places begin to, you know, it's rough and it's like all at once we begin to stick each other with our issues and with our problems and we're thinking, where did this come from? Oftentimes these things come out of our past. It's agitations and frustrations. We hear our mate say one thing, but it reminds us of something happened maybe with a dad or with an uncle, with a mom, with a sibling, somebody that we were around at school, and we feel agitated by something that's said or done. When oftentimes it had nothing to do with the mate, it had everything to do with our past. I see this especially when we have people that have been 
married. They went into that first marriage and they had all of their quills, if you will, their arrows and what happened was they'd come into that relationship and this other one had their arrows too. And here you go, two porcupines hitting each other and they, they get enough of it and they go their separate ways, they divorce. What happens? They remarry. Then what do you have? Now you not only have your past, but you have the first marriage with all of the arrows that came from that. And now you've got double baggage, if you will, and you're going into another relationship. And sometimes I see people that marry and divorce and remarry, and here it goes, and they never find any peace. There's never any resolve. Until we can deal with the arrows in life, it will be a vicious cycle. You've heard some people, it's like jumping from the one frying pan into the other. And that's what happens sometimes when we don't deal with the arrows out of our past. What is it? And we need to stop and think about this. What made me so angry when my wife said this? What made me so angry when my husband did this? Answer yourself. Be honest with yourself. And then whatever that answer is, deal with it. I know in my case, it could be something that happened out of my childhood, something that agitated me with male gender, and it would make me angry, but I had to come to the grips. The problem was not with my mate. The problem was with me out of what I had dealt with in my past that I had never dealt with. First of all, we have to find a place to forgive, and we'll deal with this later. But I had to forgive the one that caused those arrows in me. And when I forgive, I can take the arrows out, you see. That is so vital in, in relationships. I forgive and the arrows come out. Then God can heal me. But if I don't ever deal with those issues that cause me pain, I'm going to go into every relationship with my arrows. If you ever heard people say, man, she is just a bitter woman. She's just so harsh. And a lot of times, if you study out her past, you will find that she's been dealt a lot of blows in life, a lot of pain, a lot of arrows. And she may feel that she's full of all this pain and she doesn't know how to deal with them. You see, sometimes women and men, we can act like we're tough and we're so hard and we've got it together and we just act that way. And a lot of times that's just a place to protect ourselves. We don't want to be hurt anymore. So if I act mean and hard, then maybe I won't get hurt anymore. Oftentimes, that's the way we deal with that. But wouldn't it be a lot better to have some peace and deal with these issues in life and get them removed? You see, some, here's some of the situations that I hear. Well, you know, I just get so mad at him. He just works all the time. He just works, he works, he works. And I'm just so angry. So he comes in the door and I'm ready for it. You know, I've been with the kids all day and I'm ready for him. He walks in the door. Why are you late? Where have you been? My goodness gracious, supper's been ready for 30 minutes. And here he is, he's attacked. And then what does he do? He blows something else. He says something to her. He's real hateful to her. And then he goes his way and she might not let it go. She wants to talk a little bit more. And maybe he'll start, start in talking. Maybe she'll go off. And here's the thing, here's what's so sad. You have two people that married because they loved each other. Things were good, things were right. Don't you wish it was always the honeymoon? But I want you to know it can be if we'll deal with issues. But you see, the very thing we're wanting is we're wanting relationship. Here's a woman that she's wanting to be with her husband. She's wanting his presence. But look how she handled it. Look how he responded. If you've got two people, they're going at each other, you're never going to have peace. But wonder if one of them refuses to fight. Wonder if one of them listens. If we will quit the fight, maybe we can sit down long enough to listen to where the other's coming from. The problem is we attack. We attack because we're hurting. I say it's like a, an animal that's been injured. You know, you reach out to help it and it will bite you. You have to be very careful with an injured animal. So is it with our lives. When we've been injured, oftentimes we have a tendency to bite. We come against somebody with an agitation that only drives them away when really we're very needy for them in our lives. So many times I tell people, you know, he will say things like, well, you never do this and you never do that. And I say, think with me just for a moment. You see, you're wanting her to do this thing. This is what you desire. But yet you're always talking to her, you do this, you don't do that. 
And I said, the Bible says that life and death is in the power of the tongue. You are speaking what you don't want over her. You are prophesying over her what you don't want. Wouldn't it be better to fill our mouths and bless our mates with what we desire? I said that to a lady recently. She looked at me and she said, and you have got to be kidding. Here's where we get this, and I turned here, Romans in chapter 4. I hope that's where you are in your Bible. But we're going to begin reading in verse 17. And it says this, As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Now here God is speaking to Abram. Now if you'll remember, Abram was told that he would be a father of many nations, which the name would be found in the word Abraham. He was going to have to change his name. Now you can imagine how that Abram felt. Here he is, he's getting on up in age. Here's Sarah, she's beyond the years of bearing children. And now, God, you're wanting me to go around and call myself Abraham, which means father of many nations. Can you imagine going around everybody and you know how old these people are and you're saying, I'm a father of many nations. I'm a father of many nations. But you see, Abraham chose to believe God more so than he did the circumstances. Let's look at it. As it is written, God says, I have made you a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Calling things that be not as though they were. Now, that may sound strange to you, but what this is saying, I'm going to call things as I believe they should be, rather than calling things as they appear. Every time that man speaks over his wife, you never do this and you do this, that's exactly what he's getting. And isn't it amazing, I'm not saying it's right, but how sometimes flesh will respond, if you don't think I can do this, then I'll just show you I won't do anything at all. We call that rebellion. But at the same time, the way we are treating our mates sometimes is getting the results of the things that we do not want. Wouldn't it be better to deal with our mates with, I would like for this to happen. Is there something I can do to work with you to make this possible? You know, just the change of tone in the way we things, say things can mean so much to us. A lot of times in counseling, I, I counsel a lot of couples, but I'll hear the man talk to her, and what he's saying is really not a wrong thing, but he has a way of projecting his voice. Well, what I meant was, and he would be loud with the tone of his voice, and I'm sitting there, and inside, I'm feeling this grieving going on inside of me. And I'll stop, and I will look at the woman, and I will say, when he talks to you, with that tone, what do you feel? And she'll say, I hate that. She said, it makes me so angry. And I says, so what he's saying, does it bother you? No, it's the way he says it. What does it remind you of? That's the way my daddy used to talk to my mother. And I used to see her cry. And I would go off and cry because of the way daddy talked to my mother. You see, the tone, this man has talked like that all of his life. That's just the way he talks because that's the way his family talked. He doesn't even have a clue the way he's saying something is bothering her except that she reacts in such a way he knows there's something wrong. I don't even know what to do with her. I don't even know how to deal with her anymore. And it's because she doesn't let him know what he's saying or the way he's saying it is bothering her. Instead, she is responding out of the hurt of her past. You see, with these environment of counseling or two people that would be willing to sit down and talk through these things, we could get to the root of where these things are coming from. There's been many times I would sit down with my husband and I would be agitated and he would say, Charlotte, what's wrong? Why, what, what's, what's going on with you right now? And maybe through tears, I could say, I'm feeling so-and-so. 
And he says, why do you feel that way? That wasn't maybe what I meant or what something over here meant. Why are you feeling that way? And I would stop and I would answer because that's what I felt back here when I was in the sixth grade or the seventh. That's, that's what I felt then. And it brings me pain. Well, see, that's an area where we're getting to the root of my thoughts and my feelings and we can deal with it so it doesn't cause me to live in this realm of whether it's depression or frustration, confusion or anger. So what we need to learn to do is to find out what is it you need? What do you want me to do? How could I say it differently? And, and I know this particular man I'm thinking about, he says, I realize, you know, where, where I am missing it right here. And he says, I ask you to forgive me. Well, of course she was quick to say, honey, I know that you didn't mean that, but it always just makes me angry when you talk to me like that. And he said, I work on that. Well, see, when you've got two people that's willing to work together, then you can have this place of unity. What do we need to do? We need to call things that be not as though they were. The lady that uh, said, you've got to be kidding, Charlotte. I'm to speak that over my husband. She was talking about where there was an ex-husband involved and he still has rights to come in and see the children. She said, I, Charlotte, I just, every time I see him, I get angry. She said, every time, I just, just something rises up inside of me and I'm just so angry with him. Well, you know, she had forgiven him. So where does this come from? Anytime you have been dealt with in a harsh way, this person has hurt you. We've been talking over and over. We will continue to do so. There are arrows that's been put inside you. You forgive, the arrows come out. But at the same time, when you see that person, you see words don't even have to be exchanged. Your very eyes can declare to you the thoughts which bring emotions to the body when you see somebody that's hurt you. Now, sometimes we can forgive and we can get over and we can go on. You know, we're fine. But when somebody has been extremely wounded, I want you to know it's more difficult. Now, in time, God can heal in such a way that we can go on and be okay. But there's things that in my life that were just horrible that happened. And I've forgiven. But if I see that person, feelings rise up inside me. And sometimes out loud again, I'll have to say, but I have forgiven, and I call their name, and I refuse to allow that to hold me. But you see, what she's dealing with is every time she saw this man, those feelings would rise up, and then it made her feel guilty and ashamed. She felt hindered, and she didn't want to be there. And I said, what we have to do is to start praying for him. You have forgiven him. You know what he's done to you. That doesn't mean you have to give place to him, but you start praying for him because she's wanting him to be saved and wanting him to get his life right with God so that he can be a godly example, you know, for, the, for her children. And so that's very important. But I said, how about, and she was saying he does this and he does that, but I said, how about if you start calling him, not to his face, but in your prayer life, what you want him to be? And she said, what, what does that mean? You start saying, call his name, and say, I call him a born-again, spirit-filled man living for God and serving God. I call him a man that is sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. What will you be doing? Calling things that be not as though they were. That's faith talking. And that is what inherits the promises of God. She said, I believe I can do that. I said, of course you can. And when you start saying that to the point that you are believing what you are declaring more than what you're seeing, I believe in your feelings can change. Why? Because then we're changing what we think. Thinking causes feelings. Think God thoughts about those people and see if God doesn't begin to work in your emotions. I want to take just a moment and say thank you to all of you that take time to write to me. I cannot begin to tell you what a blessing it is. I try as much as possible to write everybody back. I still do that. I take a few moments and I'll write you a note, a note. And what a joy it is for me to take that time to say thank you for writing and to say thank you to you who give to bring into light ministries. It is a lot of expenses are incurred in ministry. 
We don't charge for giving the word, of course. Freely I have received, freely I give. But to be able to be here, coming into this place and sharing God's word with you, it costs money. And I know sometimes, again, we don't realize how expensive that it really is. But I want to ask you today, will you give your best to bring it to light? I don't care if it's $5, 10 whatever you can do. It's when everybody will give something that there is no lack in what God has called us to do here. We would appreciate it so very, very much so that we can tell others in greater ways about our Lord. Now, until next time, may God bless you, and I love you. I love you all. Hello, I'm Shantae Hockman, Charlotte Faber's daughter. As you have tuned in today, you may be suffering with pain, sickness, disease, depression, or another mental disorder. We believe that Jesus wants to touch you with His healing power. Healing is part of the Christian's redemption through Jesus Christ. Isaiah 53 and 5 tells us that we were healed 2,000 years ago by Jesus' stripes. Healing is for everyone, but we must believe it and receive it. I want to pray with you today. If you would extend your hand towards mine and close your eyes and imagine by faith that Jesus is right there before you, just reach out to Him and touch Him. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your healing power to flow through each and every person's body right now. Lord, I thank you for touching them and Lord, making them whole today. We thank you, Lord, for delivering them from pain, sickness, disease, or oppression. We thank you that by Jesus' stripes you are healed and whole in Jesus' name. Amen.